And so this month is a time for us to free people from all types of enslavement. And then we receive that great reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, and the freedom from different types of enslavement is to take them to Islam. As one of the great Imams of this Ummah said, Islam came to take people away from slavery to other people and take them to slavery to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To remove us from servitude and slavery to people and take us to servitude and slavery to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to ubudiyya, to this total, complete, committed worship and submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ramadan is a time for us to, to do that. And through our da'wah, through this message that we would share with others, through helping others in their difficult situation, situations or conditions, we can bring them out of different types of enslavement and take them to the freedom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by them believing in Allah and worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam continued in his khutbah, increase in yourselves four characteristics, two by which you will please your Lord and two others by which you cannot live without. The, f the first two qualities to please Allah, the Prophet said, are to bear witness that there is none worthy of worship but Allah, la ilaha illallah, and to ask for forgiveness from Allah, astaghfirullah. So these are the two qualities by which you cannot live without. Sorry, by which you will please your Lord Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet said, however, the other two things that you cannot live without are to ask Allah for paradise, Allahumma inni as'aluka al-jannah, and to ask Him to protect you from hellfire, Allahumma ajirini minan nar. And so two things that will please Allah, and two things that we cannot exist without, we need it for existence. For the true existence is the existence of the Akhirah. The true life is the life of the Akhirah. This, this life of this dunya is a temporary phase of life. But it is very important because the way we conduct ourselves in this dunya, in this world, determines our well-being in the hereafter. And so we should be mindful about that. Two things that will please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to testify that there is none worthy of worship, or to bear witness that there is none worthy of worship but Allah. To be frequent in reciting the words of Shahada, La ilaha illallah, La ilaha illallah. And to ask forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to say astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah, to recite it as much as possible in the blessed month of Ramadan. And the two things you cannot live without, to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his paradise, and seek his protection from hellfire. Allahumma, Inni as'aluka al-jannah. Or to say, Allahumma ajirni min nar to, to say these words often, uh, as much as we can in this blessed month of Ramadan. And, and these words have great impact for us in what we do. The Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam then mentioned the 13th point of his uh, khutbah for this blessed month of Ramadan. He said, Anyone who gives water to a Muslim at iftar, Allah will give him water during the day of judgment from the fountain of the Prophet ﷺ, which will make him not feel thirsty till he enters paradise. And so now, in this final part of the khutbah of the Prophet ﷺ, the, Prophet's then, the, the, uh, the Prophet ﷺ connects our actions in this dunya to the akhirah, to the day of judgment. And says that if you give water to a Muslim at the time of iftar, then Allah will allow you to drink from the fountain of the Prophet alayhi salatu on the day of judgment. Look at the connection between the good deeds of this world and our status and well-being and our position in the hereafter. This is important for us to understand this connection. Yes, the good deeds that we do affect our well-being in this world and in the hereafter. 
And specifically here in this khutbah, if you give water to someone who's fasting, for them to break their fast with at the time of iftar, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would give, will cause you to get water, will allow you to get water from the fountain of the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam, from the hawda sharif of the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam on the day of judgment. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us to drink from the noble hands of the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam, from, from his noble fountain. And he said in the hadith that anyone who drinks from the fountain on the day of judgment will never feel thirst after that, on that day of judgment. And that's a, a terrible day, the day of judgment, a difficult day, beyond our imagination. It will be so difficult. There, there, there are people on that day who uh, disbelieved in Allah in this dunya and did all kinds of wrong things. And they're going on their way to hellfire because of what they did. But when they face the conditions of that day, they would beg Allah, Oh Allah, bring judgment. To us, we, 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 we can't take these conditions anymore. It's too difficult. Even though what is coming after that is much worse for them. So it's a difficult day. And, and, and to be honored with drinking from the fountain of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam is a great blessing indeed. And, and there are those who will be turned away from the fountain. And when they'll ask why, they say, well, we are from the Ummah of the Prophet. Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Why are you turning us away when the angels turned them away? Uh, they'll be told that no, you're not from his ummah because he didn't follow him. And so be mindful of following the Prophet alayhi salatu wasallam. Be mindful of loving the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Fill our hearts with this passionate love for the Prophet alayhi salatu wasallam. And may Allah subhanahu wa taala help us to drink from the the blessed hand of the Prophet from his noble fountain on that uh, on that day of judgment that Allah subhanahu wa taala would bless us with. And and so the Prophet alayhi salatu wasallam concluded this khutbah in an amazing way to connect the, the good deeds of this dunya with our well-being in the hereafter. And so let this month of Ramadan be a time for us to rush to do good deeds as much as we can in this blessed month of Ramadan. This hadith of the khutbah was reported by Ibn Khuzaim in his Sahih and also by Imam Al-Bayhaqi and Imam Ibn Hibban in his Sahih. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us and bless our families in the month of Ramadan. Wa sallallahu ta'ala ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته